Hello everybody, this is Laura coming to you today from The Last Days Ministries. I hope you're doing well. Now, um, I got a question from um, a brother in the Lord, and he was asking me about um, David Jeremiah, this, this gentleman here. And he was asking me whether he was good or not, and should I be, you know, he wanted to understand whether he should be listening. He also asked me about another another man, but I'm going to be doing a video on that in, at a later date. So, but um, at this moment in time, we're going to be looking at this man here. Now, this is a blog spot that I'm going to be reading, and it's called Rather Expose Them. I'll leave the link underneath. Like, uh, this was done in Wednesday, March 25th, 2015. Okay. Um, so, it's only three years old, but the information is still true to this day. So, let's just look at this. Um, so, I'm going to read this. Uh, Wednesday, the March 25th, 2015, Complete Ecumenical Apostasy. David Jeremiah invites Roma Downey and Mark Burnett, Catholic New Age heretics, passes, quote-unquote, turning point, that's his ministry turning point, into heresy and apostasy. Jeremiah has already passed the turning point towards heresy, apostasy, Catholicism, and New Age mysticism. Okay, so let's just come down here. Uh, this, there you go. There you see Roma Downey. She was, I think, she was in that Saved by an Angel, or I can't remember exactly the name of it, but it was something to do with Saved by an Angel, and it's all very mystic and all that kind of stuff. And here she is with Mark Burnett, um, and they talk to David Jeremiah about A.D. The Bible continues. So the information down here is we have okay there's information there the revolution um i'll leave the link underneath so you guys can peruse this at, at your leisure um so let's come down here um dave jeremiah completely and utterly deceived a lighthouse trails a lighthouse trails reader who is on david jeremiah's mailing list received the following email notice from david jeremiah the appearance took place earlier this month please read our new booklet tracked article by Gregory Reed, Confused by an Angel, <laughs> The Dilemma of Roma Downey's New Age Beliefs. Okay, so here we have, you're invited Thursday, March 12th at 3 p.m. Come and see Roma Downey and Mark Burnett live at Shadow Mountain. Now, Shadow Mountain is the ministry of David Jeremiah. So there you see Shadow Mountain Community Church, um, and they are situated in uh, San Diego, in El Cajon. By the way, I've been to El Cajon um, a good few, long time ago, back in the year 2000, 1990-2000. So I know the town, um, but this is where they are situated. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. So this is what this is you're invited thursday come see roma downey and mark burnett live at shadow mountain which is david jeremiah's church okay this thursday march 12 3 3 30 p.m um, ad the revolution that changed the world and here is the invitation so dear we'll just put mary in there you're invited to be part of the live studio audience as i interview the producers of the bible and ad Mark Burnett and Roma Downey on stage in the main sanctuary at Shadow Mountain Community Church this Thursday, March 12th at 3 p.m. on Easter Sunday. Turning Point Television, that's David Jeremiah again, will begin airing our new series, A.D., The Revolution That Changed the World. This teaching series is the scripture behind the story of the dramatic NBC television event, A.D. The Bible Continues. We are privileged that producers Mark Burnett and Roma Downey asked to partner with them in telling the story of the early church through the characters found in the Book of Acts. I pray you will join me for this live taping with Mark and, and Roma as we discuss the role of Christians in Hollywood and how God is using biblically based programming on primetime television to reach the world for Christ. Doors will open at 2.30 p.m. and the taping is scheduled to begin at 3 p.m. 
This interview will be aired on Turning Point Television and used online and in social media to promote the message of this groundbreaking series. See you on Thursday, David Jeremiah. Now, we know that Roma Downey is Roman Catholic, and uh, so this is really wrong. So, you know, we've talked about before about the one world religion and the one world order, but well, we're very much in the middle of the apostasy right now, because it's happening all over the world. And part of the apostasy, of course, is that they're going to get all religions lead to Rome, so that there will be a one world religion. And we're seeing that with the Pope, where he's connecting with all kinds of religions right now in history. So this is a very um, strong biblical time. Okay. So AD, the Bible continues. That has to, I think that's to do with the show. Then we come down here. Okay. So here we have Southern Baptists and Catholics praising um, New Agers' work. This is 2015 Way of Life. We'll leave you the links underneath. Southern Baptists, Catholics, Pentecostals and Emergents are praising the latest work of the New Age entertainer Roma Downey. Those who praise Downey's newest product, AD, the Bible continues, include Ronnie Floyd. Now, Ronnie Floyd is, he was at together um um in 2016 and he is heavily into um the ecumenical movement as well um that happened back in 2016 remember in washington dc where all of the um occult memorabilia was was around we saw the you know the the, the poles and and everything that has to do with um occult doctrine so so here we come um yeah, president of the Southern Baptist Convention. I mean, that's really bad. Like, the Southern Baptist Convention has gotten very bad. It's full of Freemasonry at the moment. It's pretty much everywhere. I've discussed this with a friend of mine, and she agrees. It's everywhere. Okay, so let's go. SBC, Ed Stetzer of the SBC Life Weight Research, George Wood, General Superintendent of Assemblies of God. Now, Assemblies of God... Some of them preach a good gospel, but some of them really don't. They teach the Arminian gospel that you can lose your salvation, and that's no gospel at all. So here we have Catholic Cardinal Donald Whirl, Joel Osteen, you all know him. T.D. Jakes, a modalist, a oneness Pentecostal, does not believe in the Trinity. Andy Stanley, which is a total heretic. Max Licado, Perry Noble, is another one that was actually thrown out of the church. He's vile. Um, and he's also, like, to I mean, just really bad. Anyway, and Rick Warren, of course, he's heavily involved with the Roman Catholic Church. Um, he's, oh my gosh, he, you know, he thinks that the Roman Catholics are Christian. Just really bad. The praise from these men is effusive and lacking any warning about Downey's apostasy. For example, Stetzer says in AD, Mark and Roma have masterfully brought together the text and context, bringing the story alive in a fresh new way. Sorry for laughing, but these are Roman Catholics. They don't, they're not regenerate of the Holy Spirit. So there's no way that they could bring the true text and context together, because they're not, they're not regenerate of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Showing the true promise and peril of the early church situation, A.D. is amazing television and a gift to the church, quote-unquote. Roma Downey is the Roman Catholic co-creator with husband Mark Burnett of the History Channel's popular The Bible miniseries and The Son of God movie. She calls Pope Francis a, quote-unquote, a new Pope of Hope. In parenthesis, Roman da Roma Downey, Christian Post, April 4th, 2013, she says, I have prayed to Mary and loved her my whole life. Again, Roman Catholic praying to Mary, that is very common. I was brought up Roman Catholic, um, we're not supposed to do that. There is one mediator between God and man, and that is the man Christ Jesus. Okay, um, the Bible, an epic miniseries, catholicclaim.com, February 28th. So, sorry, February 28, 2013. She promotes the use of the rosary as a meditation practice by which she prays to Mary as the Queen of Heaven and Mother of God. Now, the rosary originally, actually, I think it comes from, um, is it the Buddhist or the Hindu? I think it's the Buddhist religion that actually comes to the prayer, the prayer um, beats. Anyway, she 
Okay, the Catholic Mary is sinless and can hear the answers of the prayer of every petitioner. That no, this is what Catholics teach. They also teach that Mary is the co-redemptrix with Christ. It's very blasphemous. If you go to the Roman Catholic, um, read it in in the book. This is what it says. Uh, what Roman Catholics believe, and of course, when I was a Catholic, if the Pope said it or the priest said it. You better believe it, I believe it, you know. But praise God, I've been saved for a very long time, so that's a no-go. Anyway, so, thus having the divine attributes of the immediateship, you see what I'm saying? Omnipresence and omnipotence. So she's saying that Mary can be everywhere, and she's the same as God, which is not true at all. She was a created being, and she called Jesus her saviour, okay? But Roma Downey's heresies exceed those pertaining to Rome's papacy, sacramental gospel, and communion with the demon masquerading as Mary. Roma graduated from the University of Santa Monica with a graduate degree in spiritual psychology, which is described at the school's website as the study and the practice of the art and science of human evolution in consciousness. Now, we've talked about this before. There's the thing called Christ consciousness, or the Kundalini, which is a false spirit. It's a it's a counterfeit spirit. It's not the Holy Spirit. So this is a different spirit. The benefits of, of spiritual psychology include, quote, uh, quote, experiencing enhanced spiritual awareness through knowing yourself as a divine being. Now, anybody going ring, 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 that has to do, that's actually satanic, because we're not supposed to know ourselves as a divine being, because they believe, unfortunately, they believe that you can become as God. You'll be a little God. This is coming from the Word of Faith movement as well. They teach that too. And learning to relate yourself with greater compassion and awareness of yourself as a divine being having a human experience. Oh my God. Good grief. This is like, um, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. That's what, um, what's his name? Crowley, who was the head of uh, the occult, he would say, do what thou wilt is the whole of the law. So, you know, and they were all about like that they were gods and they could become gods. Um, okay. So why would any Bible believing Christian recommend movies produced by a new ager without the loudest and most fervent qualification at the very least? And here he says in scripture, which is true, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what hath fellowship what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness? And that's in Second Corinthians sixteen fourteen, and this is posted by John. Um, and I shall leave the link for you. Now the next thing we're going to do I'm going to bring you over to this video, and I'm going to mirror the video. I'm going to leave the link of the video underneath. Now, the person talking here is um, well has well researched this particular gentleman, um, and he's written a book um, that actually documents the information that we're about to hear. So this is well documented. This is not just hearsay. This is not emotional. This is factual. Um, now, of course, we are to test everything that we hear by the word of God. Of course, we keep doing that. And you continue to, to test me. But um, now we're going to look at just all the informa more information on David Jeremiah. And we'll just play it now. Okay. So, let's play this. Who is Pastor David Jeremiah? Most know him as the pastor of Shadow Mountain Community Church. And the host of the popular radio program, Turning Point. He has an earned bachelor degree from Cedarville University, a master's from Dallas Theological Seminary, and an honorary doctor of divinity from Cedarville University. In 1981, he inherited the pastorship of Shadow Mountain from Tim LaHaye of Left Behind fame, who stepped down in 1981 after 25 years of pastoring. That same year, David Jeremiah was given an honorary doctorate from Cedarville, where previously his father had been president from 1953 to 1978. The previous information can be found on David Jeremiah's Wikipedia profile and on the Cedarville University website. There are a number of red flags that go up regarding David Jeremiah. Firstly, Shadow Mountain Church displays an all-seeing eye 
and an inverted crucifix on a stained glass window, prominently featured behind and above the pulpit. There is no mistake about it, and many images can be viewed in David's services posted on YouTube and on various other internet sources. Mo okay, so, just before we go on, I know that some of you are not, I suppose, <laughs> very artistically minded. I am, and I can see the eye. I'm sure a lot of you can see the eye. There's the eye there. Okay, and there's the lid. Okay, and there's the pupil. And in the middle of the pupil, you have an inverted cross, which is extremely satanic. So what they're basically saying, and then they have the entrance of thy words, give it light. Now, why would an inverted cross be on this? It doesn't make any sense. So I think what he's doing is he's what they call, it's called dualism. What they do is they show you the good, but it's es that's um, the esoteric and the esoteric. Now, the, I think it's the esoteric that's basically um, hidden, okay? But this is hidden. The entrance of thy word giveth light. Now, so we have an inverted cross. And who does the inverted cross stand for? Only, of course, Lucifer and Satan, all right? So let's just continue with this. Most know that the all-seeing eye and the inverted crucifix are associated with occultism, and particularly the Freemasons. So we must ask the question, what are an all-seeing eye and an inverted crucifix doing in what is supposed to be a Christian church? To get a broader perspective of this questionable symbolism found at Shadow Mountain Community Church, one need look no farther than Tim LaHaye, Jeremiah's predecessor, who used the cross and crown symbols on the cover of his 1998 book titled, The Power of the Cross. The cross and the crown displayed exactly as Tim LaHaye has done is the emblem of the Knights Templar, an occult order that many have linked to the Freemasons. In fact, some Masonic temples feature the Templar logo inside their buildings. Additionally, LaHaye's Prophecy Study Bible also features on the front cover an occult symbol incorporating the hexagram, a symbol relating to satanic hexes and curses. So in light of David Jeremiah succeeding LaHaye as pastor of Shadow Mountain Community Church, it is only reasonable to suggest that he and LaHaye share the same spiritual and philosophical values. It is highly likely that after 25 years at Shadow Mountain, LaHaye would recommend someone very much like himself to carry his occult work forward. Secondly, David Jeremiah is not really entitled to promote himself as Dr. Jeremiah, as his doctorate is unearned. Standard academic protocols as laid out by the Associated Press Style Guide, APSG, are respected by all major credible universities, students, and graduates. They maintain that individuals who have only honorary doctorates are not entitled to use the designation of doctor to describe themselves. That is reserved for those who have done the rigorous academic work to actually earn a real doctorate. Because David Jeremiah has not done the work, he should cease and desist from promoting himself as Dr. Jeremiah. It is misleading and at worst dishonest. Yet you will find his books and promotional materials littered with the designation of doctor used to describe himself. Like his colleague Ravi Zacharias, most people are unaware that he is not a doctor of anything. Apparently men like these have little respect for those who have studied and worked tirelessly to earn the title doctor. Thirdly, Mr. Jeremiah has been a regular guest on Trinity Broadcasting Network, TBN, where he has endorsed Paul and Jan Crouch and their money-grubbing praise -athons. For those who don't know, the Crouches promote every heresy in the book, from Roman Catholicism to Word of Faith doctrine to prosperity gospel, false prophecies and phony miracles. The Crouches are among the most wicked of individuals who pose as Christians, Yet Jeremiah has no problem cozying up to them and the likes of Jesse Duplantis, E. Jakes, who also appear with him on TBN's praise In Okay, just so you guys know, um, this guy, T.D. T. Jakes, he's a modalist. He does not believe in Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. He believes that there are three manifestations, so he's not, he's, he's, um, a total heretic. He's all involved in modalism and everything. 
and uh, he's a word of faith teacher and he's a total heretic. Okay, let's just continue. 2015, Jeremiah was scheduled to appear at the Jumpstart Conference, along with Joyce Meyer and Joel Osteen. Recently, David Jeremiah yoked with Paula White, Kenneth Copeland, and Jan Crouch to lay hands on Donald Trump in light of his pursuit of the presidency of the United States. Furthermore... Now, just so you guys know that Kenneth Copeland is somewhere kind of behind there he does do a prayer and I think now I could be wrong guys but I think that's David Jeremiah there I think because he's got very white hair or, or kind of yellow hair but um, and there of course you have uh, Paula White one of the most revolting ugh, the word of faith teachers who teaches that Jesus is not the only begotten son of God and um, he was she was with Larry Hook saying that so yeah so here we have all of these um basically false people standing around this man who is definitely he's not saved at all um so anyway let's just continue along with tim lahay bill hybels tony evans k arthur pat robertson charles stanley and ravi zacharias david jeremiah helped to draft the document evangelicals and catholics together an ecumenical initiative that states evangelicals and catholics are brothers and sisters in christ this now what i want you to notice here is the fingers and the hand here this is the el diablo sign it's part of the freemasons all right so what you're dealing with here this guy is in has been implanted by the freemasons to deceive the christians this is the luciferian thing that they do they put in Freemasons to deceive. This blasphemous. Sorry, to deceive Christians. So you have to be, especially at this time, because we are in the middle of the great apostasy. People think we're on the beginning, but no, we're actually right in the middle of it because this apostasy started back in a very, very long time ago, but it's been getting worse and worse. And now, I mean, literally, I have people. Pretty much from all over the world, I have people from Africa writing to me, I have people from America, Australia, um, England, um, obviously in Ireland, um, I have people from Ghana, <laughs> you name it, I have people contacting me saying, what am I going to do, Laura? And I'm saying to them, look, there is a great apostasy, this great apostasy is happening, but the Lord will protect you, won't be worrying. So let's just, I'll just bring this back a little bit, okay, and we'll play this again, all right helped to draft the document evangelicals and catholics together an ecumenical initiative that states evangelicals and catholics are brothers and sisters in christ this blasphemous document was signed by a wide range of denomination leaders including david jeremiah fourthly in his book titled life wide open jeremiah favorably quotes new agers mystics and contemplatives and in his book, Captured by Grace, he endorses Henry Nouwen, a Roman Catholic mystic. This, of course, is not surprising, given Jeremiah's willingness to endorse heretics like Joyce Meyer, Paul Crouch, and Joel Osteen. And this goes hand in hand with his participation in helping pen an ecumenical document, ECT, that is clearly designed to unite all who name the name of Christ under the banner of the Roman Catholic Church, or Mystery Babylon as described in the book of Revelation. Lastly, David Jeremiah is affiliated with Promise Keepers, and has been speaking at Billy Graham's event called The Cove since 19... Okay, so I wanted just to give you some information on the Promise Keepers. Um, the, the promise keepers are a bunch of men that get together and they praise God and it looks really fantastic it really does because you've got all these we, uh, what you would, would we consider born again Bible believing Christians together and it looks beautiful you know these precious men of God but here's the big but it's actually Catholic and it's ecumenical and it's going towards the one world religion okay so we're really very you know we're on the road and we're very close to that one world religion I, I really believe the Lord is coming back soon of course we don't know when but um we just keep praying to see the Lord come in, in glory but uh, that's up to whenever the Lord decides to come nobody knows the day or the hour but let's just continue 
1992. For those who don't know, Billy Graham sold out to Rome and ecumenism decades ago. In my book titled The Jesuits Ordained Unto Condemnation, I thoroughly document this. Jeremiah also hosts rap groups like DC Talk, and he features numerous sports figures in his pulpit. It seems he has little or no discernment regarding the role of a pastor and the true function of a church. Instead, at times he makes it a platform for worldly amusement. My conclusion is that David Jeremiah should be avoided. He appears to be part of a Masonic Templar connection that has long infiltrated the Southern Baptist Convention. And he yokes with the worst of the worst. And clearly he is a leader within the ecumenical movement, guiding Protestants, Evangelicals, and Baptists back into the arms of Mother Church, Mystery Babylon, the mother of harlots. guys so there you have it and um, i hope that helps the brother that wrote to me asking me about this gentleman david david jeremiah and um, i did leave a little message under his message to let him know that no he's not safe and um but i'm doing this video now for for him and for others of course who don't know about the connections of david jeremiah and that he is actually in fact um basically someone that was placed in by the Freemasons and is an occultist. And what does the Bible say? It says that in the last days many false prophets will come. They will come in sheep they will come in wolves. There'll be wolves in sheep's clothing, like David Jeremiah, very handsome older gentleman, a nice suit, looks very clean cut, well spoken, but he is very much involved with the occult. So I hope that helps, guys. May the Lord bless you, may the Lord keep you, and may the Lord let his light to shine upon you. And I'll talk to you super soon. Bye for now. Bye-bye.